Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world on this apocalyptic day, dealing with home invaders. Get out. And today is going to be an interesting, different day from our usual fare, I think. Because I have in this chest and in my inventory, I have gathered not all, but a lot of the things that I think we will need in order to go out and take a trek across the land down to our quarry, where we have this magnificent dirt hut. And some of you have been bothering me for a long time to get rid of my dirt hut and to upgrade to something better, and that is what we're doing today. So, we're going to head out on a bit of a journey with this chest on our backs, and we're going to get right to that. Now, let me explain why I packed the things we did. I packed some of the wood that is going to be harder to find out there. If I can close this, there we go. Out where this area is, there's pretty much mostly oak trees. These might be a couple acacias, but I'm not positive. So I figured we'll bring some acacia and a little bit of purple heart just for accents. We're bringing some light sources, beds, and some slate roofing. Now you'll notice that I only have a couple kinds of cobblestone with me. That's because I don't want to have to spend time making cobble. But I think for the rest of our materials, we are going to basically mine them in situ. We're going to, you know, use our quarry and we'll build with the materials that are available in the area. The slate roof is sort of a an exception to that. So we'll be importing the slate. And I'm also bringing along some blue clay bricks to make some accents and maybe some kind of trim. I'm not quite sure, but I thought it was a neat color to work with, so we're doing it. I'm also bringing some seeds and some bushes so we can set up a permanent but small garden out here. And we'll check the temperature because I don't quite recall what the temperatures are like out here, but hopefully it'll be good. And then I'm also bringing at least one of each tool that I think we'll need. And actually it's mostly just one of each tool. We have the pantograph, the hand wedge, the hand planer, all from Cupitex Chisel Tools. We have wolves howling in unison. We have a steel hammer, a steel chisel, pickaxe, shovel, saw, regular axe, and so on. So with all of this ready to go, we are going to sleep through to the morning. I'm going to grab some food from our pantry, and then we're going to set out. All right, rise and shine, everybody. It is time for us to get going. Let's grab our food. Then we put our chest on our backs, grab our things, and let's go. Okay, and with no trouble along the way, we are here at our beautiful, gorgeous, and amazing dirt hut. Let's take one last long look at it before we help it wander off into that sunset. <sighs> I know you can't see it now, but I'm actually crying. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and unload my inventory in here somewhere. Oh, we have seeds here already. Cool. And then I'll bring you all back when we are ready to start work. Oh, hey, an empty chest. Let's use you instead. Okay. With the sounds of our meal cooking behind us, I think it's time for us to get to work and talk about what we're going to do here. So, one, we are going to tear on the start hut and turn it into something... Well, replace it with something a bit more livable. And I was kind of thinking it would be neat to make like a stone cutter's house where we can have like piles of bricks outside and have like some more easy sort of more sensible direct access down to the quarry maybe with like a staircase or something instead of these very OSHA compliant ladders. And I also want to talk about some other things. I want to have a little garden out here for just 
easy food. I might also want to grab, like, the, some branches off of that fruit tree and that one. I think it's that one. And sort of plant some fruit trees closer. Here, there's one there and one there as well. Just plant some here so that if we happen to be here during the right season, we can get some fruit as well. The house itself, I want to make... I'm kind of torn between doing, like, just a single level or maybe an interesting split level with different heights of different floors in different places. But the first thing we do need to do is we need to go and gather resources. You'll notice that I didn't bring along any Terra Preta, and that's because there are one, two, three, four, five Terra Preta sources in the immediate vicinity, so we are good on farmland. I didn't bring along, oops, I didn't bring along a bucket either. That could be complicated, but I'm sure we can find some flax that we can get, you know, four flax from to make some twine. And I did bring a saw so we can make boards for the bucket. We are also going to need some clay, and there is some blue clay at the other end of that little pond over there. And if we need wood, we have oak over here, I think. Yeah, we should have some jungle over here, which means kapok if we want some of that. But I might just go for some oak since it's nearby and we haven't worked with oak for a while. And then, ah, we do have some spare acacia. So we'll get to that too. We also have over here on the map, we have a meteorite impact that we've already mined out the good stuff from, leaving only suavite. But I thought maybe we might want to mine some of that out and use maybe the polished or the cobblestone for something. Those are the only two options. You don't have bricks when sway white, at least not yet. So, yeah. That's the plan. Let's get to it. And like that, we have prepared our canvas for our new house. And yes, we are living ever so temporarily in another temporary shelter over here, made out of this fine, this fine mineral material. Yes, mineral. Anyway, we are about ready to break ground for our project today, but there is one thing we have to attend to. And that is the winner of the raffle for the Vintage Story Key donated by Farkoth in the last episode. So, let's head over to our random number generator, or random name pooler, and let's get that done, shall we? All right. Congratulations to SharpTile for winning this Vintage Story Game Key. I hope you enjoy your time in the game. Watch out for drifters! I'll reach out to you on YouTube to notify you, but we'll need to set up a private communication to send the game key. Discord might be the best option here, but we'll figure something out and get this game key to you. Once again, I want to thank Farkoth for the donation, and for the fun this has generated. Make sure to check out his mod Ceramos if you want to use some fancy ceramic tiles in your builds. Okay. Let's get started on our new house. And what I want to do is we're going to have a house that is right up snug against this ledge here. Nice and dangerous. And then right over here, I think I want to have the sort of like stone cutter area. So we'll bring the stones up. We'll have a stone cutter here who works them. And then we'll take them back home. So let's like get, I don't know. I want this to stick out a little bit. So maybe like that. We'll do something like this, and I'll have like a gate here, and then something like this. I don't want a huge area, so a bit something like this. 
for the size of the stone cutter area, but I also want this to be recessed into the ground by one block. So we're going to take this out like this, and that's how we'll start. So that'll be our stone cutter area. The house, let's just go a little bit bigger. I kind of want it to stick out a little bit, but not too much. And for the seeds that we have in the chest over there, I was thinking that a rooftop garden could be cool. In which case, we're going to want to have about this size. Could be one, two, three. Have like a walking path in the middle, then one, two, three, and the corner. And we'll have the house come in like this. Now, as far as the door is concerned and the first floor, I want this to be raised up one block so that this is now two blocks above the area down here. And then what we'll do is over in this corner, we're going to put a roof on this area and a second floor. We're going to build a split level house. So you'll come in here. If you want to go to the bedroom, you go up these stairs here over the stone cutter. If you go down to the stone cutter, you can go down here and then maybe like... I don't know, maybe like under here somewhere, we'll have an access to a cellar where we can keep our food and other stuff like storage out of sight, out of mind, nice and cool down there. So I'm going to go ahead and get to it and I'll kind of bring you back along the way. This is going to be a somewhat long build for a single episode, so I'm not going to show every single step along the way, but I'll try to show sort of like the general floor plan followed by the walls followed by the roof and maybe some of the like the portico out here and then the decoration of it. And we'll sort of pause in between to take a look and sort of talk about where we're going to go next. So here's what I have come up with for a bit of a nighttime shot, illuminated with the light of several lanterns, is that this would be our first floor and we'd have some kind of portico here something like this, a little bigger than we have at Lupine Ridge because that's kind of cramped. So I'm thinking maybe something that can come through here and maybe have a road that goes down that way. And we'll have our front door here. We'll have our living space in here. We'll put our kitchen probably over here or maybe even over here. Although I was thinking it could be cool to have like a deck that comes out here over our very precarious quarry. And then we have a little bit of a sort of step down into our door that goes down to the stone cutting area. We'll have another staircase down right here that goes under the house and to our cellar. And then up here, we will go to our bedroom and maybe some like basic everyday storage, like not like food and so on. And then up here with this little sort of curving staircase up to what will be the farms. Now I had to sort of fiddle with this a bit because I realized I put the staircase, it started one block farther back at first. And so I had an issue where I was going to run into the block here or remove it and see, you know, bare dirt or farmland there. So what we'll do is we'll just put a stair block or chisel a stair block out of sandstone or whatever our material is in the walls here. And we'll use that so we can just go down smoothly. Why don't we go ahead and get our Terra Preta in while we're thinking about it and see how that's going to work out. I can find the darn stuff. And I also think I might like a bit of path. So let's chew through some of this ugly green stone and let's go put this down. So there we go, we have a little rooftop garden with a bit of a path, and I'll probably use some of the acacia fences around here and around the house in general for just sort of the nice color it has. Now what this will do is this means that under here, in order to avoid seeing dirt and having water dripping on our heads, we're going to need to put a ceiling in that is either one full block, which I don't like because it means we'll have a three block ceiling and that's just sort of not very roomy. So what I'll probably do is do a half block ceiling. I keep bumping into you. Put a half block ceiling right under these guys and be very careful about placing my water. And that should let us get a little bit more headroom so it doesn't feel as claustrophobic. 
And it will make hanging the lantern difficult, but we might just put the lantern on the side, like maybe on a counter or a table, or just somewhere generally out of the way. So I think what I'll do next is I'm going to sleep and make it morning, and I'm going to start working on the walls. Now I have collected a fair bit of sandstone rock, but I don't know it's going to be enough for... You know what? No, it might be enough. It should be enough. I think we'll be good. But I also want to try playing around with some blue clay brick blocks, which is why I brought these and the mortar. And I kind of want to do like a, a base in these brick blocks and maybe even some corner work with them. So we'll get that in and then we'll see how many we have left. Oop, I hear some fun times. Ooh. Bye, guys. Anyway, we'll get the sandstone and the brick box going on, and then we'll see how it looks from there. But first, before we do that, I see that the orange trees have fruited, and they are ripe for the next 11 and a half days. That looks really cool. I like that a lot. I may gather these up, although we probably won't use them all before they go bad. But oranges are a, as I recall, yes, they should actually last decently long in storage. I guess we'll find out. Eh, they last okay in storage. 50 days is nothing compared to the 100 and something of the pomegranates, so it's not bad. So, it has dawned on me, much like this day has, that I didn't quarry out nearly enough sandstone because we are also out in this chest over here. So I'm going to get down to that at some point here very shortly. Some of you are probably shouting at me, hey, you found that temporal gear. And yeah, I did. When I got here, there was a, well, there's a, a high rift night and a couple drifters came and showed up and... I beat up in the morning, and I got a temporal gear. So, I guess we have no excuse for not activating that other translocator we found in the last episode. But that will be for later. Today, I wanted to show you what I have in mind for the brickwork along here. Anyway, what we're going to do here is we're going to get our chisel and hammer in hand, and we will drop you right behind us for better light. And we're going to start with you, and we're going to go ahead and drop you in there, and I think we'll do you as well, just sort of as a demonstration of what I want to do. Okay, so similar to the fireplaces at Lupine Ridge, we are going to be taking out this material and replacing it with this like so. And we're going to play it pretty close to the corner here. I don't want to have too much of the brick showing because it is such an overwhelming color when compared or when contrasted, I should say, with the sandstone. So I kind of want it to be a little more subdued. But what we're going to do then is we're going to come in here and probably like this, we will just sort of start making this sort of wave pattern with the bricks. I think it would just sort of be neat to break up that line, that sort of stark line. And I could almost go... Ooh, I could almost go... like this. You know what? I think I like that more. That way this sort of border at the bottom isn't so much thicker than what we have on the corners. Because this is what we have in the corners. So yes, I think this is going to work out a bit better than my original idea, and we will just copy that the whole way up and the whole way around. Now granted, we need a lot more sandstone, but that's for later. 
That is future Corsar's problem. Now, for right here, I had another idea in mind. I was thinking it would be really cool if we used some of these bricks and... Let's just go ahead and do it now, actually. While I'm thinking about it. And what if there used to be a door here, but it has since been bricked up? What we could do is say maybe... Let's get the bricks back out. There we go. So there's the top of the door frame. Let's go ahead and we will finish up this side. And then I'd kind of like to do a bit of an arch here. So we're going to need to... Oops. Throw our bricks in front of us. We're going to need to do a bit of this and put another brick in there. Another brick in the wall, you could say. There we go. So we once had a door in this wall, but we plastered it over, we covered it up, but the original brickwork framing it is still here. And what we can do is, over here, we could put a similar bit of brickwork around this door. I might pull the door to this side of the block. I'm not quite sure yet. But yeah, I think that's just kind of a fun detail. And we probably won't do it on the inside, because inside, we might have maybe torn the bricks out and plastered over them so we don't have that sort of door appearance on the inside. Or maybe we did. We can play with it later. Anyway, I'm going to get to quarrying out some more sandstone. Probably another two rows below what we have already quarried out. And then I'm going to get to copying all of this sandstone and brickwork in here. I think then it'll be time to probably drop a roof on here and get the ceiling in if we can find the kind of material that I think we want to use as well as replace this placeholder cobblestone with other stuff. But wait, there is more. Something that I forgot is one, let's go ahead and... Oh, darn it, that's not what I wanted to do. We can undo that, luckily. There we go. Snapshot you and do that. Okay, you are not yet added to. Can I add a material in this interface? I cannot, okay, that's fine. But anyway, the other thing I wanted to do is I was thinking we could use the add remove matching material and we could push this in just a little bit. And that I think would be really interesting to give a bit of depth to the whole build. And that way we don't have to worry quite as much about adding the corner bricks on the outside of the build like we did at Lupine Ridge. This way, this is all one block. Now, this will mean that we won't be able to, say, hang vines. But if we really wanted to, we could probably go to, like, a top layer here and just pull the block out the whole way like it is right now and hang a vine from that, and then we'll never notice. Anyway, it is time for me to get to that quarrying now. Do you see them? A trio of little chickies. And I have a trough there and a trough there, each with one piece of grain inside. I think it could be cool to have a little chicken coop out here, since we don't have any chickens down in the Silver Mountains here. Because they're kind of hard to get up the mountain. But a small chicken coop out back here? Kind of cool. And you know what? I think that in light of these chickens possibly joining our little family here, I think it would behoove us to go ahead and put part of the ceiling in, just the parts that really matter right here for keeping water out of the house. We'll put some water down. Time for a hoedown, you could say. And then we'll plant our soybeans and our amaranth. And there we go. And maybe we'll even cap it off with some fences, as promised. And that way... Whenever our chickens arrive, you're wandering farther, guys. Whenever they decide to hop on in there, then we will start to be able to have some grain to feed them. I might just go chase them in. I don't know. Anyway, back to work. Okay, everyone. After a couple days of work and fending off some drifters, I have most of at least one side of the house done. Whoops, you shouldn't be sticking out that far. There we go. Much better. But I thought that having this sort of 
very orderly half bricks for the windowsills might look good. And I have an idea for what to put in these windowsills, but that'll be for a little bit later because we're actually out of blue clay bricks. I thought I made enough, but apparently I didn't. So we're going to go and dig up probably the rest of the blue clay over there and make, oh, three at least stacks of bricks. Yeah, I think three should do. And I want to get some bricks on these corners here and above and below all these windows on the half slabs. I guess the slabs. And then around our door frames so they all look like the bricked over door frame right here. And then I think we'll be ready for a bit of exterior decoration. Okay, with our bricks firing, let's get to work on some of the exterior decoration here before we get the rest of the bricks in place. And I did run back to home because I needed a scythe to get enough grass for all of this, and while I was there, I just picked up the rest of the grass anyway, so boot point. I also brought these shears because I took out plenty of leaves by hand, and I'm done with that, so yeah. That's how we're going to play it. So, what I want to do here is, I figure it's going to be too hot here to have glass windows because they don't open. So, what I was thinking was we could use... Not quite like that, I don't think. But what I was thinking, though, is that we could use some of these wonderful doors to kind of act as shutters. There we go. And we'll probably leave these open most of the time. In fact, probably all the time. But I thought they'd be neat to have as sort of a neat exterior decoration on the windows here. And yes, they will break. And that's going to be a real pain in the butt. But oh well. That's why we never close these. There we go. Now, for, for the center one, I was thinking we could go with another one of these guys. And it wouldn't look bad, but when we opened it, it would look real stupid. <laughs> Doubly so. Okay. What I was thinking, though, is we could maybe instead do something like this. Not quite. Let's go with that. And then something a bit like that. There we go. And we'll only do this central bit for any windows that have... Well, that have three blocks of window space. So for this one over here, we'll just use these rough doors. And for this guy, should be our only other three block window. Now this one's a bit of a special case because this is a one and a half block window. And so what I'm thinking is we will just do something like this. And we'll hang these here like that open that way. And the reason that I'm putting all these on the outside is that we can have some windowsill space to put, say, plants on or a lantern, that kind of thing. This will sort of be our shelf space. So I'm going to go ahead and get these in here, and we'll see how it looks afterward. All right, and there we have our little window shutters, hell hanging open, letting the breeze through. I think our next thing is going to be, let's put the roof on, at least up on this section, because we have a roof here already. And what I want to do for the roof is, I was thinking it could be fun to make it a little bit offset so that it sort of peaks here, like above this block, rather than right in the middle. And that's why I've made this wall a little bit higher than this one. And we'll see how it looks. It might be a little funny. If it is, we'll take it down and rebuild it, but I kind of think it would help balance the building toward the middle because it's already so heavy on this side that having the peak just a little bit toward the right might help it sort of just feel more balanced. I also may come in here and at least over the windows that don't have roof over them, I might come in and put little mini roofs over top of them just to help keep the rain and other things out over these, I won't, because they'll be close enough to the roof.
Okay, everyone, our roof is in, and I opted for a nice breezeway up here with this sort of latticework of acacia, and I originally was going to try to use the fences for that purpose. However, I found that the fences are actually not the same size as the standard microvoxels, so I wasn't able to complete the sort of connection from the top of the fences into the slope areas here. So I had to go and find a different solution, which was just to do it by hand. I think it works out pretty well. And this should keep the roof from getting too hot during these really balmy days. 26 degrees in winter? Whew! Wow. I think the next thing to do is I'm going to go ahead and spend some time finishing out the rest of the brickwork on here. Get it around the doors, around the windows. And then I think I want to focus on what's going on down here because this is a stonemason area, so we want to make sure that this is very thematically appropriate and stony. Let's get stoned. Wait, 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 no, YouTube, please, please don't monetize. No. Okay, everyone, with a meh, more than a few minutes of work, I have all of the brickwork done around all the windows, all the doors, and also up here, I thought a nice bit of trim would look good. And after a moment of struggle and face palming when I realized I was doing something wrong, I now have brickwork up here. So I want to turn our attention to what's going on in here. And for that, we're going to move you to... Uh, oh, there are no solid blocks anywhere. There we go. Good enough. It, it floats. We all float down here. So what I want to do here is I'm going to take up the floor... And what I'm going to replace them with is sort of a mix of a couple things. One is we have some suavite from where I took apart some of the meteorite. I have it in both cobblestone, impact rock, and polished versions. But I'm not sure I want to use the rock, but we'll see. And what I want to do is I just want to come in here and kind of randomly speckle these around here. I think I'll go kind of heavy on the granite. One, because it's cheaper, and two, because I think the suavite is a little heavy on the texture. And there, let's start with that, and then let's go ahead and add some suavite in. Yeah, that looks pretty good mixed in. And then, I'm going to come in here every now and then, and we'll put like a big old flagstone in. And I really only want to use a couple of these. That should probably do it. Let's fill the rest with suavite and see how it looks. Yes, now this is where a stone cutter works. Let's get some bricks for here. And we have exactly enough. If I don't miss. There we go. That is so much better. Okay. Now the next thing I really want to do here is we need a staircase that takes us down to about where the quarry begins. What we're going to do is we're going to have a staircase down and then we're going to have like a little deck where you come out and there's a little place to stand and then you take the ladder the rest of the way. I just figure having a big old ladder up here would be kind of dangerous, which I mean it is. And also I didn't want to build the deck up here because we're going to have one right over here as well. And I didn't want to have that sort of run into each other. And I thought a bit of elevation play would be fun. What I really want to do is I want this staircase to kind of run under here, so I want to have it come down here first before we turn. So something like this, and then we could have it turn, and then go down from there. So that's what we're going to do, and then I'll come back in and I'll fill it in with the rest of the stone. The dirt, I'll replace the stone, but the sandstone and whatever else we dig into I'll just leave that as the bare rock, because why would we replace it? It's stone. We're a stone cutter. That's what we do. So, yeah. Let's see how it turns out. Okay, everyone. We are pretty much done with this whole area here. Aside from the decoration, of course. We now have our little stone cutting area with a walkway down to a little tiny deck. 
And never mind the fact that we currently can't actually get out of here because it's a little low to the ground. But uh, yeah, like I said, don't worry about it. I also came over here and I added a little bit of a deck. And I want to come through and put a little gate here. Keep the drifters from being able to come up here and into our window. That would be most unfortunate. Let's go here and talk about what I'm doing here. So you'll note that I planted a bunch of oak trees and they all grew. Hooray! But I thought it was kind of too cluttered. And so I'm going to take these down. And I think what we'll do instead is I'm going to go over over yonder, I think. Yeah, it should be over here. And take out some of these acacia trees and get some of their saplings. And I'm just going to plant one here and over there. And then one here and over there. And that should be enough. And I might sort of keep a couple around to plant maybe a couple more scattered around here. Maybe you want to shade the chicken coop. Or chicken pen, I guess, as it were. And yeah, that way it'll look a bit less cluttered and just feel more appropriate for the landscape. Now those may not grow by the time we're done here, but maybe they will. We'll see. But I'm going to start moving these things inside, and we're going to get started on some of the interior decoration that I have in mind. Okay, well, trees have been planted and cleared out, and we have a new chest of just wood, and I found a couple really huge ebony trees that gave us a ton of logs and four seeds, so woohoo. Anyway, let's start moving things inside, because I think we're about ready to just abandon and tear down this wonderful little abode here. I'll miss it so much. But let's get started by coming in here and setting up our kitchen area, which is going to be like that, I think. We'll put a clay oven in the corner. I don't think we'll do much baking here because it's just too hot. And then I think what we'll do from there is we will put our cooking fire right here by the window where all the heat and smoke can get drawn right outside because who's ever heard of a chimney, right? And then we can pile our firewood up here. There we go. Not too shabby. Now for our lanterns, these are a bit tricky because I don't want to put them on the ceiling. They're too low. And we'd also need to chisel that down a bit too. Let's put this one here over the door. There's one down here over the door, and I think I'll leave that. And what we'll do from there is I think we'll probably use a few more lanterns to just kind of round out areas that don't have enough light. Like we might put one up, I don't know, up here, or maybe actually over here as like a light in the window. And then we'll come up here and we'll put one maybe outside attached under here to illuminate this and just to sort of give, you know, more light to this side of this room because it will come in through the door. And then it's going to come down to, I guess, some furniture and some decorations. That means probably some clay forming because I want to make some planters and pots. And then we'll come in here and we will also put down some working tools in here. That will be exciting.
All right, everyone. Like that, after way, way too many days of being out here working on this project, we finally have a finished house and landscape going on here. And I spent a little while kind of just waiting for time to pass to let these trees grow. I'm a little disappointed with them, but to be honest. I'm probably going to knock down this one and probably that one. And probably this one too, actually. And replant them before we leave. So that way when we come back, there's a chance they'll be bigger. Anyway, along here I have alternating pomegranate and orange trees. These will, well, some of them will grow, hopefully. And we'll eventually have pomegranates and oranges available to us. I did move the chickens back here. And I put some bushes to sort of hide their, you know, their sights and their sounds from when we were in the kitchen. And we still have just the three. I haven't really been feeding them because we are pretty low on grain right now. And I planted a small pumpkin patch back here. Hopefully we'll get more than one pumpkin per plant. But I guess time will tell. Maybe you can go away. Maybe you'll sprout a new one. So coming inside here, we of course have the stone cutter area and the stairs down to the quarry down there. And we have a little bit of a basement here, or a cellar. And we have lots of stone storage in here, as well as some food storage. Now, the olives and the oranges aren't going to last, but the soybeans, the peanuts, and the grain will last, so we can come back and, well, whenever we want to, and get food when we're here. Heading on inside, I decided to take some of these bony cow skulls that I found on the trip back from Silver Mountains. And I was going to put them on the outside, but it requires a fully solid block here. And I didn't want to have to mess around with that. So I put them on the inside, and I figure we can have them here over the doors to keep the evil spirits out. Because they like to come in your doors, and this is how we keep them out. By scaring them off with a skull, I guess. We have some chiseled benches here, because I was too poor to have any cloth. So I just used some of the purple heartwood. And we have decorations galore in here. Coming upstairs, I went a little further with decorations. I found some of these lobster mushrooms over... If I can get up here, I cannot. Over down there. Eh, right beyond the mountain. We've seen them before, and I've pointed them out, I think. But I got a couple of them, and I was like... Hmm, what to do with these things, and I guess whoever sleeps in this room, which would be us, has an obsession with mushrooms. So, that's what they're doing. I put some non-stone storage here. I've got like dirt and clay and wood, uh, natural things, and then seeds and animal stuff up here. And I have rotated the crops once, so we now have soybeans growing on the left and new fresh amaranth on the right. And yeah, so I am really happy with how this came out. This was a lot of fun. A lot of work, but a lot of fun too. And oh yeah, we have these little roofs over the, or awnings over the windows here. I was a little uncertain about them at first, but the more I look at them, the better it looks. Like these here, when they didn't have the awnings over them, they looked like they were just sort of floating. Ah, they were missing something, and I think these awnings were that something. Lastly, I also put down some path here, as you can see. It goes to everywhere, and I even started the path out this direction. Now, we're not going to actually make the whole path from here back to the Silver Mountains, but I wanted to have something just sort of showing, you know, where we usually travel. But this will sort of be like a little, hey, we're home kind of thing when we start walking on it, so it should be kind of neat. I popped some berry bushes around here, too, just to sort of give a little bit of definition to some areas and just sort of hide some of these corners, and I think they work out pretty well. But overall, I am super pleased with this build, and I hope you are, too. Anyway, I need to start packing things up and chopping those trees down and replanting them, and then I'll be heading back to the Silver Mountains for the next episode, and that's where we'll start and pick up next time. Once again, congratulations to Sharp Tile for winning the Vintage Story Game Key. I will find a way to reach out to you, and we'll get that key over to you as soon as I can.
I wish you many happy hours adventuring and avoiding drifters and bears and wolves and... It's terrible. Why would you want this game? Anyway, as always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.